Hey everyone, it's Erin Melton back again. Very excited about who we have on today. It is Cliff Freeman. Cliff, thank you so much for joining us. Hey, I am just, uh, I'm super stoked to be here, Erin. Thanks for the invite and uh, man, I'm fired up. This is going to be a great show. Absolutely, for sure. So Cliff, tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got into real estate. Yeah, so it's kind of a funny story. Um, I'm a second generation realtor. I used to joke that I was born into real estate and that my uh, my mom's water broke while she was showing a house. Pretty um, much. <laughs> but it, it, you know, never let the facts get in the way of a good story. But, you know, nonetheless, I, uh, I used to listen to my mom when I was growing up and she would, uh, you know, she would be typing uh, contracts in triplicate using carbon paper on a an okay. IBM Selectric typewriter, and wow. uh, you know it was uh, it was just a different world. MLS books came out uh, once a week, and they were in black and white, and they were real thick here in Dallas. Uh, but everybody was trying to get the edge on you know the the new listings and that sort of thing. But um, fast forward, I uh, I got my license back in 1987, uh, and really didn't do much with it. I I, I dabbled around in some commercial. Uh, endeavors uh, initially and and uh, was involved in the uh, sort of the food service business and purchased a couple of buildings uh, that we opened up uh, businesses in and so forth. But I didn't really get back, you know, with it into residential until um, I moved back to Dallas. I was in Houston uh, at the time, went down there to go to Rice to, to go to college and kind of got lost, couldn't find my way back up to Dallas for a long time. And got married in between and all of that, you know, stuff that happens in life. And um, finally got back here and, and, and cracked the real estate books again and, and uh, started back in 2000 and actually got into lending as well. I was very interested in mortgages. So I did that. And I, back in those days, people that had a mortgage license and a, um, a broker's license and a, and a real estate license were called uh, super agents, right? Cause they could kind of do the loans and do the, you know, the, uh, uh, the real estate part and, and everything. But, um, you know, I just, I, I kept doing that. And I, I joined um, uh, Keller Williams, great company to get started with back then uh, and uh, got promoted pretty quickly up to their productivity coach, which is where I met Mike and Jay and sort of, uh, you know, long story uh, longer, even, um, you know, I, I spent eight years with those, uh, young guys helping build up their, their, uh, coaching business. Um, and, uh, you know, am now, uh, you know, with EXP, you know, many years later, and, and, uh, it's kind of like old family reunion week. Every time I look up, I see, uh, people that I've come across over the years and, and, uh, it's, you know, it's, as they, uh, the blues brothers said, it's great to have the band back together again. That's right. <laughs> yeah. That is excellent. Cliff, what would you say is your why? I, uh, you know, it's, uh, I'm not going to answer like Brent. I Listen, I love Brent to death. <laughs> Brent has got, he's got so much going on. He says, I don't really have a why. I just love everybody, you know, and, and I'm kind of that way too. Um, you, you know, what, what really got me out of bed is, uh, you know, when I was, when I first got introduced by Brent, he's my sponsor to uh, EXP. I was at a position in my life where I was really felt like I was going to outlive my money and I hadn't established uh, any kind of a legacy for my family and my kids and stuff. So I think what drives me now maybe is a little different, you know, back when I was a young father and that kind of thing. And I, I as we get older, I, I think our why evolves and, it does. and, you know, there's a little more wisdom behind it and, and mm -hmm. more maturity. And, you know, now I'm I'm looking at the uh, you know we, you mentioned John Kitchens earlier. I love John. John mm -hmm. and I are great friends and and uh, work together for a number of years. But he does this example of he'll pull out a string at a at a coaching or at a, a, a event or you know at a training event, and he'll say, "Look, this represents your life, and mm -hmm. this is how much time you get." And he holds the string down and puts it on the table. And he says, "Where are you on this string?" And you know what you realize is once you're past halfway, you know, when I hit 40, it's like, damn, I'm, I'm closer to the end now that I am the beginning. Yeah. And, you know, you, you start thinking about things that you never thought about before. Mm -hmm. And this, this sort of, you know, this, this, this invincibility that young people have, they think they're never going to die. Never, you know, they're going to be around forever. 
all of a sudden, you know, you're confronted with like this, this notion of this idea of mortality and, yes. and you know, what happens then and, you know, what do you leave behind and so forth. So I was, you know, at 58, I was really making good money, but I, it had been a rough battle. I mean, people look at me now and they go, you know, Hey, you, you know, you got everything you need. You're making, you know, tons of money and everything. But, you know, the reality is, is back then, you know, I didn't have enough money to retire on and I was afraid yeah. I was going to outlive my money. Um, so I think what really drove me at that time, there was a couple of things. One was I realized I had a limited amount of time mm -hmm. to get some things done in this life that I really wanted to get done. And one of them was, you know, I've, I've always, um, been, you know, blessed to have been able to hang around some really great people that influenced my life. Zig Ziglar was one of them. Um, I used to sit on the second row of church at, uh, Prestonwood, uh, here in Plano and he and the redhead would, you know, would, 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 uh, they'd have a, a the encouragers, a Bible study first at, uh, nine o'clock. And then, you know, we'd all go to, to big church, what they call big church. And, uh, you know, Zig is, is, has a number of sayings, but one of the things that he said was, is that, you know, you can get anything in life that you want if you just help enough other people get what they want. And yes. so I've, you know, I, I've really, that, that has so much meaning to me because what I've been able to do, like here at EXP, for example, is, you know, it's the, the leverage and, and the number of people that I'm able to work with and help change and impact their lives has grown exponentially. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, because of that, so has the reward. And really, I look at the money as really nothing more than a measure of how well I'm serving other people. I think yes. Brett mentioned that too. Brett and I are like kindred spirits in a lot of ways. We played rugby in college and, you know, we, we both got kind of interesting backgrounds and stuff. But you know, I, what, what really drives me now is I know that um, uh, to put my debt in the universe and have the biggest impact that I can have, I've got to really, you know, I could have retired two years ago, but rather than do that, I decided to go ahead and push forward and yes. build a legacy. I brought my two children into the business. My wife is in the business with me. Uh, and, you know, now we're really trying to build something that's going to be lasting and generational and something that will have hopefully leave this world a better place than when I got here, uh, in, in spite of all the stuff that's going on. Yes. Uh, you know, I still am committed to, you know, to, uh, you know, to doing good in here and, and lighting candles on the way out. So that's there really, that's my why today it wouldn't have been my why, you know, in my twenties or thirties, but certainly, you know, today that's, that's kind of where I am. That makes a lot of sense. I see lots of parallels. You know, my husband and I being in the business, he's not licensed now, but both in the business. We have one of our kids that's in the business. We have our soon-to-be son-in-law in the business with us. Um, our kids grew up being surrounded by it. So I, I completely understand what you're talking about. Nice. That's completely great. Completely understand what you're talking about. Yeah, you know, for that, sure. That mortality does sit in and all of a sudden you're like, all the stuff you've been doing, you're like, you know what? I'm just not okay with this. Not that I don't, I don't want to work hard and give back but I'm just not okay with this lifestyle anymore. So. Right. Yep. For sure. Yep. A lot of things change. Lots of things change. Mm -hmm. So Cliff, talk to everyone about Cliff's Notes podcast. Wow. Um, well, you know, you and I were chatting kind of before the show a little bit about video and you had mentioned that, you know, if, if someone had asked you, a year ago, you know, did, do you ever think you'd be, you know, hosting your own podcast, TV podcast, and everything? And, and no. you were like, no way, right? No, you gotta be kidding me. So, uh, you know, I realized that my, my son, my son's really smart. I, mm -hmm. I just, you know, I'm, I'm really blessed that I've got a couple of really smart kids and, and, you know, they, they got better looks than I did. So I just scored all the way around. But he said something one day, just out of the blue, we were talking about video and he goes, you know, a, if a picture tells a thousand words, then a video tells a story. And I was like, wow, that really hits home, you know, because sales is all about sales is really all about telling stories. Um, so I, from that moment, I was like, I think video is really going to be where I need to be focused because what you're actually doing is you're creating assets every time you do a video that you can use more and over and over. It's like building software almost, you yes. know, you can create it once and use it a thousand times. And, you know, in, in terms of the communication, the ability, the, the tonality, the body language, I mean, words are only 7% of communication, human communication, um, you know, tonality and body language are the, 
by far the biggest majority of how we communicate, which video captures that. So, you know, and, and being free and ubiquitous with YouTube and, and, you know, there's so many great places now that, you know, you can syndicate your video and reach people that you could never reach before. And it's got a great ROI. So I decided I needed to, to get really, I needed to get better. And I hired a media coach. She was actually, uh, she ran the NBC news desk here uh, at uh, six o'clock in Dallas, Fort Worth. Uh, mm -hmm. for 20 years. Uh, and she was really, really good. And, and she had a coaching program. So I signed up for that. Uh, and Jane, bless her heart, Jane McGarry um, was the one who suggested that I call it Cliff's Notes. Um, she said, you need your own show. I was like, you're kidding. You know, this is after we coached for a while. And then right. you know, we've gotten through the interviews and how to do that kind of stuff. She goes, you really need your own show. And I said, oh, no way. It's, but so she introduced me to Jeff Crilly, who owns the studio, Real News uh, Network uh, here in uh, Dallas. And uh, Jeff has a studio. And so I uh, went in and met Jeff. And golly, I was, you know, got behind the microphones and stuff. And and I felt like as I was a DJ back in high school and in college. Okay. And I just, I, I, it was like, you know, kind of like a glove that fit really well. Mm -hmm. and, and I said, well, heck, I'll, uh, I'll just go ahead and, you know, give this show thing a whirl. And she, she said, what are you going to call it? And I said, I have no idea. Probably something to do with real estate. She goes, well, why don't you call it Cliff's Notes? I love it. Okay. Well, it sounds like a winner to me. Uh, and so we, you know, we, we came up with an idea for the content and, and we wanted to make it, you know, uh, appeal to an audience of realtors who mm -hmm. were looking to, you know, uh, learn more about the business, learn how to, you know, run a better business and so forth. And, you know, what it's turned into now is, um, you know, we do it every week and, and I get some of the top agents in the country and, uh, and the top influencers, um, who come on and, and it's, for me, it's exciting because I get to kind of pull the curtain back a little bit and yes. get to expose parts of these people that you, you'd never see. I, I, uh, I, I'm really, uh, excited to be able to get them to, you know, share things on my show that they've never shared really in public yes. before. And there've been some, some really good moments where, you know, people just, uh, you know, they just, they just became authentic and open where mm -hmm. to a degree that I, you know, I, I was like, wow, that's pretty, pretty bold, you know, to say that out here and, 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 uh, and helpful too, because, you know, I, I think that role models, the, the role models that we have here yes. in real estate, you know, the success leaves clues and, and people learn a lot when they listen to other successful people, people who have been, you know, where they want to go. Um, and, and that's the way that we try to present, you know, these folks that come on onto the show. And, and uh, you know, obviously it's, you know, it's it's very conversational and, and a lot of times we don't even have an agenda. But, um, you know, I think it, it, at some point there's nuggets that, you know, that come out of there that anybody who watches. We have some really loyal followers that watch, I mean, religiously every week. And and, uh, you know, they they just say that, you know, they just it's it's, it's almost soothing to, you know, to listen to. And, and, you know, that's what we wanted to do. We wanted to create something that was, that was going to bring a lot of value um, mm -hmm. and really help people in this industry that's fraught with, you know, especially in a market like this, my gosh, yeah. there's nothing that's soothing that's going on, right. Or, yeah. you know, anything that, you know, kind of, kind of helps you, uh, you know, go through this between this and COVID and, you know, inflation coming up and everything else going on. But anyway, so it, it's, it's turned out to be a, a lot of fun. My son's on it. Uh, and, you know, we're going to keep doing it until, you know, until nobody watches anymore or until we get, you know, maybe we get tired of doing it, but right, right now it's, it's just a lot of fun. And, and um, I hope, you know, people continue to enjoy it. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think you've hit the nail on the head right there that, um, we all have this persona that we put up, the, the, the business card persona and the brand that we put out. And that's important. You need to exude that at all times. That's how we're successful. That's how we're able to influence and help more people. But there are times when other people watching that are uh, in real estate and wanting to take things to the next level and thinking, well, they just have this magic thing that I don't have. And then you listen to people that have been at the place or are going in the place or are already there and go, they've got the same problems I do. They just might be at a different part in that string, that business string. And that is very helpful because this business, as you know, can be very lonely. 
Oh, gosh. Yeah. I mean, I hadn't thought about it that way in a while, but, you know, it really is. Um, most agents are independent agents um, and not on a team. And and even if you are on a team and maybe you're the team leader, that's why we all love to get together and mastermind and mm -hmm. socialize and and hang out, which was, I think, one of the intangible things about EXP that yes. a lot of people don't understand is we talk about collaboration, but mm -hmm. unless you are at the build conference and and felt the level of love and energy and, and sharing that was there, you, we can't even describe it because mm -hmm. it hasn't really hasn't existed in this industry before. And no. look, I'm not going to say that, you know, there aren't other franchises that that have created a great culture. Absolutely. But what, I, what I will say is, is that we don't have people competing against each other. We got people in the same markets who are masterminding, trying to help grow each other's business. Right. And that's something you don't find in other franchises, mm -hmm. places like that. It's all, you know, they, it's cutthroat. And, and uh, even people in the same market centers, you know, are very closed, you know, uh, close to the vest when it comes to, you know, what they're doing. They're afraid somebody else is going to figure it out and, you know, go take clients or whatever. It's very, it's a very, uh, you know, it's a mindset of, of scarcity that just yes. doesn't exist at EXP. It doesn't, it doesn't for sure. What would your adolescent self not recognize about Cliff today? Uh, probably how out of shape I am and, uh, -huh. uh you know, just how old I look. I don't know. <laughs> you know, my adolescent self, I probably didn't have a self, really a, a, a self-conscious moment uh, until I was 27 and, and actually got out of this country, um, you know, and went and visited parts of Africa where people are, you know, don't have any clothes to wear that are clean and don't have any food and, and water. I mean, that was, you know, that was very eye-opening. Um, yeah. I think adolescents are all you know, we're just, we're young people. We're in that sort of, um, you know, of the four stages of learning, I guess that would be sort of the conscious incompetence level mm -hmm. where you're starting to realize that what you don't know and, and you start to think, you know, things that you don't and all that sort of thing. So I don't know the, my adolescent self was, was, um, you know, me in a different body is what it was. And, and, uh, I, I, I don't know what I, I would have thought. I don't even know if I, First of all, I can tell you, I, I never thought I would have lived to, to, to be 62 because, you know, when you're an adolescent, that's like, you know, ancient, right? <laughs> it's not. And so I, yeah. And so I couldn't, I, I had, I, I struggled to even think about being that old because I saw my, my grandfather and, you know, people that were older and I'm like, I don't need, I can't even begin to think what it must be like to, you know, to be that age. So, um, <laughs> Uh, that's, that's a, that's kind of a hard question. I, I don't know. I don't even know if that's fair, Aaron, because, you know, I, my brain didn't work that way when I was young. I don't think. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I get it. Things, things to ponder, things to think on. Yeah, for sure. That's fodder. That's something to uh, fodder to chew on. Right. There you there go. You go. There you go. Yeah. How does being a part of EXP make you feel? Uh, you know, I, if, if if there, if a business venture could ever make you feel as good as having a great friend, I yes. think this would be it. Um, oh, that's a good way. You know, somebody who really cares about you and is only there to support you and help you be successful. Um, that's the way I look at at EXP. I mean, it when Glenn came up with this thing. I think he he hit the nail square uh, on the head and really designed it around the agent. You know, a lot of a lot of firms give lip service to to the agent. You know, if it's a franchise, it's not about the agent. It's about the franchisee or it's about the franchisor. Um, mm -hmm. This is about, you know, agents who are vested in the company. We own mm -hmm. stock. We're all connected by rev share, by equity. Um, I mean, it is truly a family in the sense that you know, there's something that separates us from the rest of the, you know, rest of the pack here. And, you know, it, it is that that culture uh, that I talked about earlier and then just the mechanics of the model that ensure that we're all pulling together, rowing in the same uh, direction. Uh, and I mean, I don't want to say I, I guess if there's anything close to like Woodstock or, you know, back in the hippies in the 60s, 
you know, you should come to Cabo. It's a love fest. I mean, when we get together and, and EXP con, it'll be a love fest. I mean, Brent Gove, he's like the head hippie, you know, he just, he spreads love and, and I mean, he, he just, he, he just exudes, yep. you know, the, the core values of, of EXP. And, and I heard him say, you know, yesterday, and when I was listening to your, to the, to him on your podcast about, you know, he just wants to love everybody. And that's, you know, that's why he's such a great, you know, fit yes. for, you know, where he is here at EXP and why I'm glad I, you know, followed him over here for sure. Definitely, definitely. So you've had a lot of success up to this point. What would you say is most important to you now? Uh, well, I mean, I, I won't say that I've just been standing on the shoulders of giants, really. I mean, I have been a, you know, I've had success only because I've helped other people have success. And, you know, I mean, it's, it success is contagious, especially at this company. Um, you know, as far as what's next for me, um, you know, I'm going to continue to build, uh, the legacy that I have, you know, I'm building here, uh, and, uh, you know, do something good with the, you know, the make the, make sure the profit motive here is in alignment with what my vision is for the rest of my life. And, and, uh, I, I would just love to spend, you know, the rest of uh, my working days helping, you know, pour into other people's lives uh, from a leadership standpoint uh, and just being an encourager uh, and, and helping people have breakthroughs in, in life. Because, you know, most of us, I would say all of us, in fact, didn't get where we are and reach this level of success without some help. Yeah. And you know, I just, I'm, I'm thankful. I mean, I've had so much help from so many different people. I couldn't name them all, but I can just assure you that there is so much reward. You know, Tony Robbins, um, who we, we saw here in Dallas, um, says that the pinnacle of life, you know, living at its finest is when you can give without any expectation of receiving something back or in return. Mm -hmm. And, uh, if you haven't had a chance to live life like that, uh, it really is, uh, it's the best seat in the house. And that's where I feel like I am right now. And I plan on staying here uh, for as long as I can and, and, uh, and hopefully encouraging and, and teaching others that it's not about the money. The money is just the scorekeeping. And uh, it's really about how much you're helping people. There you go. Did your lights go off there? What happened? <laughs> oh, it's you have real fancy camera equipment that just times out at a certain point. So you just have to hit it on. It's all about oh. pivoting. That's what real estate and helping people about is you just pivot. <laughs> I have, my car does that. I have to turn that thing, that automatic timer or whatever it is off so that it doesn't stop at a stoplight. I don't know who came up with that, but I don't think it's the best idea. Probably not. Yeah. Very, very good. Cliff, thank you so much for being on today. I appreciate it more than you know, and really looking forward to getting you, to know you a little bit better at EXPCon. Well, Aaron, thanks. And, you know, I would love to return the favor and invite you to come on Cliff's Notes with uh, me and my son. If, uh, yes. you know, we love, I, I know you were in Dallas. If you're ever down this way, we could do it live or, you know, we can do a, uh, you know, do a remote from the studio, but uh, Absolutely. look forward to meeting you and your husband and your family. Uh, and just so excited, you know, and, and, uh, I, you know, when I, when I meet people like you that, um, have, uh, you know, they, you know, you, you were describing why you came over to EXP earlier and, and, uh, you know, looking for a, a better opportunity and, and just being open-minded, you know, I, I just, one thing I want to, I want to leave here with our audience is, you know, as you go through life, and you look back at the big quantum positive things that have happened to you, you know, usually when something good happens, it's, it's quantum. In other words, it's, it's just a, a huge leap. It's not, I mean, you make progress every day, but sure. you can look back in your life and something, one decision that you made mm -hmm. changed your life forever. For me, like when I joined EXP, that was a life changer. And Same. I just, I, I want to, I want to acknowledge you and your husband for being open-minded uh, and, and not being stuck in the same box for the rest of your life. And, and I want, you're a great model for your audience here. And, 
And I just want to encourage everybody who's watching this show to not let your life be the same for the rest of your life. You know, you've got to jump out of the boat. You've got to look for opportunities to take a little calculated risk here and do things that make you uncomfortable, whether for you, well, there's like, you know, a video, right? Or something like that. But the thought of going to a, a different brokerage may really be scary to some people. But Terrifying. you know what? Those, those butterflies are really good. You know, I was with my dad in 1975 and I saw Bob Hope um, and he was old then and bless his heart. Um, you know, he was telling the story about, uh, you know, still getting somebody asked him, do you still get butterflies before you go on stage? My God, you've been, you know, your whole life, you've been entertaining people. And he said, I absolutely do. And the, the, the minute that I don't is that's when I've got to get out of show business yes. Yes. because that, that, those butterflies are what keeps me real. And so if you're feeling butterflies and a little uncertainty about making, you know, a change or entertaining the idea of a new business model for your business, that's really a good thing. Go ahead and keep pushing forward with it and look under the hood, find somebody not don't go buy a, a Tesla from the Ford dealership. Find right. somebody, find somebody who owns a Tesla or who is at the Tesla dealership to show you what's under the hood of a Tesla. OK, you know, quit taking your advice from people that are not there to you know look out for your best interest and are trying to, you know, maybe shield you from something or, you know, you just don't buy a Tesla at the Ford dealership. That's all I can tell you. But go ahead and 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 be open minded the rest of your life, because we we only make make forward progress when we're open minded, not when we're closed minded. So I just thank you again for for having me on the show, Aaron. I just wanted to drop that because you know it was on my heart here after the some of the things that you know you asked the questions and and we got to talk about. So thank you again. I love it. Thank you so much, Cliff. This has been super helpful, and I know people are going to get a lot out of this interview for sure. I know cool. I did. I'll see you in Las Vegas in a couple of weeks. See you there. Thank All you. All right. You're welcome. Bye-bye.